Shane Becker, right? I said that right. And we got Nick Coleman, uh, Coleman Customs, right? Is that yep. what you go by? Yeah. Is that your business is chassis work, right? Chassis work, turbo kits, okay. wiring, pretty much. I'll build you the entire car. Start to finish, you get a turnkey race car. Yep. And you are one of his customers. Yes, right? sir. Right. Yep. And you have yourself a stick shift F body over there. The broken stick shift F body currently. Stick shift and broken usually go together well. But F <laughs> body and broken, that one yeah. surprised me. So what happened? You broke it at FL2K. Yes, we had a um, an issue where we lost fuel pressure and uh, went super lean, burned up a bunch of exhaust valves, had a backfire. What made it lose fuel pressure? The reference line to the fuel pressure regulator. What was the reference line made out of? It was, out, it was from Coleman Customs, <laughs> <laughs> the rubber line. It was rated for 59 pounds of boost, and we went to 62. <laughs> yeah. So he tested your rating there. Oh, yeah. And he exceeded your rating It as popped well. right off. Yes. So, and then you bring the car here, and unfortunately, you heard it again. And I don't say that lightly. I say it, you know, somberly because the car is pretty badass. And the PB is what? 701 at 198. Why is everyone so close to sixes, it feels like? Because that There's extra so little many bit, is, it's so hard to get that little extra bit because everything's got to go perfect. And then it's so weird. Once you hit that 98, 99, it just starts flowing a little bit easier. Like, you know what it takes like to wall. get there. Yeah, exactly. Until you get to that next stepping stone and, and then it fights you again yeah and like, figuring out what it needs to go that little bit faster yeah a lot of racing has that wall that you that you hit and you have to know how to get past you have to sometimes you have to reach out to somebody else to give yeah. you that little bit of information to get past the wall and i've yep. seen that before too where it's like you just might need a sprinkle you're missing something. of something you don't know yeah your your gap in your knowledge and now this ls machine right here this brick has the stick shift record right now yep current h pattern stick shift record a 646 49 49 49 Damn 219 it. mile Freaking an dyslexia <laughs> dude it was a trip that was a really really good day like the the air was perfect what track was it at uh michigan 131 oh okay yep best track on the planet really dude, you need to take a trip there it's you won't be able to figure your car out because it will just wheelie. No matter what you put in it, it's gonna wheelie. So huh. like figuring out that side of things, man, I struggled with wheelies for a while with it and going to that track really forced me to figure that out. So like that was that, that wall to get past the, the 670, 680 mark I was sitting at. And now it's, I know what it takes to go that extra mile. Yeah. And then, you know, you in stick shift we talk about hail mary passes but then once you talk about actually making the journey to the finals is such a different level of stick shift racing man that almost takes a completely different car that is like take your fastest pass throw it the fuck away because it's pretty much useless the track's never usually that good so you gotta like fight the track and then you gotta watch other people and find out kind of what they're running and you wanna you wanna sit either good on the ladder or you wanna yeah. sit at the top. So like it's there's definitely a game to be played as far as the ET side of things. Like if you can find yourself on the good side of the ladder or the bad side of the ladder, I mean that'll make the difference in the end. And then there's the luck portion of it. It's like you could have all your stars aligned the whole way and you could just throw it all away because you just either messed it up or work. You just, some broke, roll like, the yeah, yeah roll the, the beams, it, just a silly mistake. We've seen it so. at TX2K where a car that's like eight sixties all day somehow ends up in the finals Yeah, against these six and seven second cars where you're just like. That's crazy. It, but they did it so consistently. It didn't matter because it, the other it's guy, a not a sprint. Yeah. The other guy messed up. Yeah. I mean, they, it's definitely the more, there's like two classes that are most likely to be fixing their cars, I would say, and that's sport front wheel drive, also stick shift, yep. and 
Stick shift, stick shift. Yeah. <laughs> Both of those. Yeah. I mean, if you walk around the pits right now, there's the people working on their cars are front wheel drive and stick shift. Yeah. I'll just watch that mic. I don't know where it went. It's right here. Yeah. Okay. Don't want to. Yeah. Don't want to completely lose it. Yeah. I'll just have to. There we go. I'll just have to AI his voice. In. <laughs> yeah. Right. The whole time. <laughs> nice and easy. I'll just have to make some stuff up for you. <laughs> See if that works a little better. Yeah. Wherever you want to try to put it. Perfect. Yeah. So, you were basically just giving us all a master class on suspension. He's he's kind of the guy. It seems when everybody's struggling here with getting everybody's not struggling with I getting feel like down the track. Everybody's been doing pretty good. But everybody's got their their issue, yeah. and we all seem to fall to you. Even somehow, I fell to him without realizing because you gave me all the information yeah. about because there's my car go down because there's a cookbook on you know your basic setups that everybody goes by three degrees here two degrees there well and then he tells you x number of degrees you're like wow that's really aggressive sounds outrageous but it works now would it work on a street driven car maybe not in the long term but when what we're trying to do yeah it works in the short term it yeah. works really aggressively so and you kind of had the the book that seemed to work. I mean, it clearly works for your truck. And the LS LT debate is a is a fun one as well. I this. love that one. <laughs> the the small block Chevy, uh, the motor is better. The how they the 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 bolt spacing. I, the I know. he's gonna be making himself a meme and he doesn't even know it. <laughs> it's better <laughs> it's I mean, better the small black chevy is better if i put a small black chevy in this truck i would go two tenths faster no problem um i just i really enjoy the ls it no i don't it's a piece of shit it fucking <laughs> breaks all the damn time i feel like that's the that's the positive of the LS is it's easy to fix when it breaks. Hundred percent. But the problem is that it does break so frequently. Yeah. So it's like it's like the company that has the best customer service is like, yeah, but like I want the company that I don't have to talk to the customer service. <laughs> Absolutely. Like <laughs> that if would I didn't, be my goal. If I didn't have to maintain it as much, I might be able to go to some more races, but when I have to put a new motor in the truck because I've wiped it out from making so many runs on it. Yeah. It just, it's unreliable, you know? I can watch Atkins make 40, 50 passes, and he, he just generally goes pretty quick, mm -hmm. and he doesn't have to do much to it. But I don't know. Well, I've kind of hit that. Spark plugs since World Cup 22. Yeah, That's what he yeah, just right? said, yeah. So if you guys didn't hear that, Atkins just said he hasn't changed his spark plugs all year. He said he looked at them every now and then. Yeah. But that's it. Yep. I was like, okay. Great. Like, what, 60 pounds of boost he's talking? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, he's up there. And your car, I mean, you were saying it's making 3,000 on, it. what block it's, is it? Uh, it's the Dart Iron Block, the yeah. SHP Pro. Um, and it was a Dart Billet Crank, too. Like, it, this thing was crazy on that last motor. Yeah. Um, this is a new motor, and it's, it's tracking pretty much the same. But, I mean, fuel flow is crazy time it's got tons of timing in it for what it is i i didn't think the engine would ask for so much of both but it does and yeah math doesn't lie the et doesn't lie so it mile per hour doesn't lie to take a car that 2700 pounds yep. that fast i mean it, you got to be making some steam i have a theory that tuners and racers that really kind of know what they're talking about talk about fuel flow fuel not flow just huge. like horsepower or boost numbers because fuel flow is pretty much everything on yeah. how much power a car is making if it's not flowing the fuel it's not making the it's power it's just not making the power like it's it's pretty standard yeah <laughs> it's funny because you hear some people say fuel flow and you kind of know right away that they're paying attention on a different level it's uh it, it changed a lot of stuff for me as a tuner like, I, I've been only doing that four or five years on, I, I started with MS3. So starting with MS3, man, that is one very difficult system. Yeah. Unless you're like a computer guy and you can really understand all of the frequency stuff, that system is for a very advanced person. The Haltech breaks stuff, it, it breaks a lot of stuff down a lot easier for someone like me. 
So, I mean, I've been able to work with that and make changes and it, yeah. it works for me. Um, man, it's some of those systems, very difficult, like MoTeC. I, I don't know if I could jump on a MoTeC and do the same thing I could with a Haltech. I don't think it's as user friendly, but it's definitely a, a pretty badass system. Yeah, you kind of need like a firmware. Yeah. Like an actual like starting point and... I thought that was really interesting because there's... Uh, I was talking with Brett LaSalle a little bit and he was telling me how they have different firmware packs. Yeah. And that, I thought that was pretty cool. It's definitely... Different types of racing. You can do whatever you want, but you have to have somebody that can create yeah. what you want. Yeah. It doesn't just and exist. I, like, it's not just a drop-down menu. Yeah, and like I'm a not a computer guy, so it's <laughs> not like I'm going to go and program one of those. Like, it's, when you go to Holly, it's like, I want nitrous, and there's a little nitrous bottle logo. Yeah, it's like, yep. Real easy. simple. Yeah. Let's ride. But this car is interesting from you because you built the chassis. Yep. You wired it. Yep. You tuned it. You drive it. You do all the clutch adjustments. Do you build the engine on it too? So this one, I actually had my guy at Fast Times do it. Okay. Thank goodness he doesn't. I'd, I'd just be pissed if he did everything. Yeah, he'll <laughs> try. Listen, Let this thing that last motor silly. that we'll set be the record. We'll it back together tomorrow. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like you can't, you gotta leave us something, you know? You can't do it all. I I try to though. He doesn't because line the vehicle up. If, okay. If I know everything in the car, how, how can you not make the right changes to, to go faster, you yeah. know? If there's something you're missing and you don't, you're not the one with hands on, how are you ever gonna know? So it's, when I look at every, every square inch of this vehicle, putting it together, I can make sure that it's gonna go down the racetrack properly. So, let me ask you a little bit more of a, might burn some of your fellow stick shift guys. What do you think most of them are missing on their program? What do you think they're they're falling short on that they're not paying attention to that you might be? Honest to God, testing. A lot of them just don't want to test for some weird reason, but we've actually gotten some flack because we go and test How and said, you? I tested, you test? I tested that car one time in three years. <laughs> what a dirt bag. I was. What I, a dirt I was, bag. I was accused of, of, of being piece of shit <laughs> yeah well it's like the no prep king series they're not allowed to test within like 200 yeah, miles of the <laughs> event or something stupid yeah yeah so it's just actual laps on the car but but testing is one thing but if you're not making the correct changes it incrementally so so people must be missing more than just testing because you know they can go test till they're blue in the face but if they're not how many of them are chassis builders? I don't think any of them are. How many of them are they? How? Guys. Yeah. Maybe yeah. one of them. Maybe IDS. Maybe. Right? John Rogers. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I no, don't. I no, don't I know mean, what level they know things at. So of it's course. it's hard uh, to say. They're shock guys. Um, they're so if you're going to figure out a new car and you don't take your chassis guy, you don't take your suspension guy, you don't take your tuner, and you just go in blind and you spend $300 to enter an event, you have zero testing and you go into qualifying and, and the car you doesn't work. it out in four passes, potentially four passes with, despite oil downs or anything else, and you're just blind. Yeah. So now you're throwing money out the window and you just can't get the data that you need. Testing is super important to us just to... Like, okay, so Atkins has made it a point to say he doesn't go testing, he just comes to the race, and he races to win, right? Well, racing to win doesn't always mean that you're trying to go faster. I'm trying to go faster, and I don't want to do that in an event necessarily because I, you could lose fairly easy. I mean, I've kicked the tire and lost. I've ran over a cone here last year against Jeremy Howell. Like, Three cones, uh, two, from what three. I'm told. <laughs> Whatever. I'm sorry. The whole Jason track. Miller. Yeah. <laughs> so stupid. And there was no reason for it because the truck, I literally pulled it out the trailer and I went a 660 the next weekend. Yeah. It, it was. Mm, it just blew my mind at why it turned left. So. I don't know. Yeah. There's uh, there's anom anomalies on the racetrack. You know, somebody might have oiled it down, and when they drug it, they're. Dude, there's shit in the track. There's shit you can't see. That's where that luck stuff comes in play. There might be a small bump in the left lane. That too. I don't know if you 
seen that. Is it further out, like it's, five, it, 600 yeah. feet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, I've, I got data that cars shows get, that. Yeah, almost every car on the data can sh can see it. There's yeah. like two little kind of- Front shocks, whoops. you see it, boom, boom. Yeah, and, and if your shocks topped out when you hit it, you're it's gonna be scary. Or on the tire. if you're on a shift or something and the car's unsettling, Yep. In the wrong spot could be not it's, fun either. Upsets the chassis, and you know now you got to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what happened to Farlow. Yeah, yeah. I think that, that literally watching the video, that's what it looked like. Top, so, top you ride the tire, and it hit the bump, and it just Unloaded. lost yeah. it. It's it's and when you're tough. going that fast, dude. When you're going that fast, it gone. Like he, he had no time to react to that. Yeah. There's no driver error there whatsoever. It just, just, oh man, it's crazy how fast it happens. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's happened to other cars too. I know White Rice went out and tapped the wall earlier, and it was to here. Yeah. This week, no yeah, shit. Yeah. Man. White Rice. I mean, it, it's okay. Like it was just the rear quarter, ish area. He was riding the tire. It kind of looked like it. Yeah. It definitely, I mean, it's a pretty light car too, so well, maybe. He was in the left lane, and yep. then that Lexus was in the left lane too that like got out there and just like turned left around that, you know, 500, 600 foot mark. I think yeah. his engine did blow up though, the Lexus. Okay. I think he did let go maybe a rod or two from okay. that 2J, yeah. you know. Definitely it does happen. It, it does. 2J guys are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> but the clutch stuff too is where a lot of people probably shut down it's like torque converter stuff because torque converters for most people are like well it's hard. i don't know what's going on you know like a boosted application it if you turn the boost up and you don't tighten the clutch up it it's going to just zing the clutch and yeah. then if the track's not there and you tighten the clutch up and you turn the boost up and it just is, oh, all goes to hell if the track is there and it is really there and you don't tighten the clutch up enough from the last pass when it wasn't there it, it goes to hell. So like, there's a lot of variables that can just change so quickly at the starting line that makes your tune-up just trash. But how could you possibly predict it at an event like this? You can. How do you know what you're gonna go race in? You can. But still, like, it gives you, you can do all the testing in the world. But what he means by testing. Track. So now you know, okay, this day it was cold. The track wasn't really there. I've got data when it's hot. I've got data when it's chilly. I've got data on mild prep versus good prep. You and know, I different think what tracks. he means by testing is we took his car to 10 events. Two years ago. Two, was it two years ago? Last I thought year. it was last year. Last yeah. year. 10 events. We won seven of them. And that was on so many different surfaces and that tune up in that car changed so, so much that it was, we have a lot of data on the car. So yeah. we can come to a racetrack and we can put a clutch tune up in it that we know what the crazy part is. We had to get rid of the clutch that we had in the car cause it was toast and we went to a totally different clutch and then it has a totally different percentage of change with weight. So like we were shooting in the dark here for a little bit. And then we finally got it on the last pass and it dropped the valve on us. So it's, you can have stupid shit happen to you and it just, it's out of your control yeah. and you can't keep going. I think that's where a lot of people get scared of testing too is. Don't want to wear it out. They don't want to wear it out or hurt the motor or something like that. And even in testing, you have to first be able to duplicate a pass before you can even say something is real really incrementally yeah. start changing because especially in stick shift like you know i was with garrett the other day and they did put the body on but like it's so hard to do back-to-back -back testing with a stick car yeah because you can make a mistake on the shift you could make a mistake not even a mistake but like chatter the tire like he did yeah. on the second pass man that slowed it down a but little bobble into it. second gear like a little bit yeah. you know what i mean just like i've a, noticed a weather doesn't like affect it super duper bad mm -hmm. if it's not but if it's not like 80 and up right if you have 80 degree weather and down it, it seems to be fairly you can keep the car pretty reasonable you know within a couple hundredths not yeah. tenths of a second you know it's uh man stick cars are crazy there's so there's so many variables that can change it just well, that's one what's run so cool the about them and that's honestly why I'm making this entire video talking to stick shift drivers because yeah. 
they are truly the outlaws of this whole deal. It's like the outlaw class still. Yeah. It's the only outlaw class, really. Yeah. The, I only think the only true rule outlaw is like class. Tires and big block now. No big block. Which yep. is an odd rule. Was, no, there, was it, there a big block that was like. No, but that the fact is, if I came in here with a big block, that six would turn into a five. And it would be ridiculous. That is a lot of more power that is on tap. Like, that, that making 3,000, I'm, I'm leaning on that Do you thing think like the crazy. Trans of a, the tr these trans could handle a big block, though? I don't know. I That's don't, what we're all kind of like. I don't know if the Magnum or the 56 would, but I think maybe the, the G101s or 105s, maybe. The 101s are weaker. Well, the 101, yeah. From what I've, they're like 15, 1600 at the rating at least. So that's what I think about with rules, though. Like, why make a rule in, unless, like, you have to? This because is World Cup, guys. Did they park right there? This is awesome, guys. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All it takes is one guy like me who has enough motivation and drive to get the parts that he needs put in the trans that to make it go that fast. Yeah. Like we got Matt Goins, he helped me with getting the tail shaft housing and the slip yoke that I needed to actually hold the kind of power. Matt at tick. Yeah. Um, and it, man, so far the thing's been operating really smooth. I need to pull the drive shaft and really inspect the yoke, but it's, uh, once you find the weak point, you gotta fix it. Is it just the bearing in the back then? It just can't handle it? No, it's the slip yoke itself. It just starts twisting the splines because really? the diameter or the thickness is too thin. So he found this other slip yoke that has a much larger uh, thickness to it. And it, dude, it, it's been super happy about it. Hmm. I, I can say this, this has been the smoothest the truck's been running down the track. Like just how yeah. it drives down the track. Well, you're sitting pretty good in qualifying right now. You're yeah. number two qualifier. Yep. I would say that's a pretty good spot to be for. I'm feeling good. After one qualifier, 211, you're the high mile an hour of the class. And we don't know what happened with the rotary guys in the past six weeks, but they've really figured some stuff out because there's it's three of wall. them guys that have came out of nowhere and just went sixes. It's that wall. They got past the little wall that was holding them up, and it, it it fell together for them. Sometimes I think people with, like, a rotary look at it like it's this foreign thing, or, like, people with, like, like odd combos look at it like it's a foreign thing instead of, like, zooming out and being like, no, it's just a car. You treat it like a car. Yep. They treat it like it's this, oh, no, those guys do it this way, but, like, ours is different. It has to be done this way. Yep. And then you put yourself in this like spiral of uncertainty because you know who does it? The side by side guys, like tuners and and people that build like turbo kits for side by sides. Yeah. They treat them like they're this unique. It's all the same. It's like it's just a. It's just an air pump. Yeah. It's pistons and rods. Like what yeah. are you doing? Like <laughs> yep. this is nothing new. It, not, like it exists already, and I feel like the rotary guys have finally caught on to. Dude. All I, I know is he made a hell of a pass. The rotaries are just a super temperamental platform. Like the tuning window on them just seems to be so much tighter. Dude, they just ride the wheelie bar first, second, third, <laughs> and like they gotta, they gotta like pedal it, steer it, point it, go. Yeah, they, it's it's busy in there. It's busy in there. It looks, you know it. It looks busy from the starting line, let alone being in it. Yeah. And the pass when he went the 83, the pass wasn't like super duper clean. Yeah. He's got more in that thing for sure. I bet that car goes to 72 by the end of the weekend if they keep at it. Well, and even like what you were talking about earlier, you know you can set up a car to be as neat and tidy down track or as darty and all over the place as you want. It's yeah. just about that refinement of yep. the combo and And testing. the only way to do refinement is by test. Yes, and also plotting, I'm sure, and actually understanding your chassis or just... Yes, I have never plotted a thing in my life. <laughs> it's uh, it's more so understanding push and pull points, leveraging, right? Yeah. Um, I personally don't think instant center is 
really a, I don't want to say it's not a real thing because there's a lot of people out there that'll be like, ah, oh, he's wrong, he's wrong, but I don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> I care about results. So I don't focus on the instant of center because you can get really hung up on that. Yeah. So if, if you just put the bars and the angles that they need to be to do the job you're looking for and then see results from it, that's what speaks. If it doesn't get the results, then you change it. Well, and how do you handle your car separating down track? Because, you know, people set their bar angle at ride height and then it's like, okay, but it's not at ride height 100, 200 feet out. It gets multiplied. It's, it's the, different The leverage now. gets multiplied the further you get down the racetrack. So now you need to balance the car front to back. Otherwise you get an over, like you're talking about, you're riding the tire. Yeah. It's a, it's a hard balance to get the car to not separate all the way, still maintaining the leverage in it because you don't want to ride the tire. You never want to ride the tire. Then you're just, you're literally, the track and the tire are the only things yeah. that are keeping you going. If you can constantly figure, if you can figure out how to get the car to constantly leverage itself, I mean, that's, you'll always have traction. You can always pour more power to it. It'll always go faster. Yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, maybe listening to this don't realize how actually sketchy it gets when a car is separated too much. Yeah. Because they all see that, like you see Grubworm, you know, he's not quite maxing out the shock, but you see it separated a lot. But then there's a point of over separation where you're, you don't actually have any, you're just you get solid air under, mounted the car basically. You get air under the car too. And that'll, that'll pick it up even further. So it, it, it's just a balance between how much air you get yeah. underneath the car, how much is over the car, how much you're using to actually push the car down. So it's, well, it's like the same thing with the front end, you know, the wind driving the front end left and right. Like we've seen at FL2K with Granis. Like, yeah, that was a real sketchy, like he could have lost as the car As soon as they right put there. braces on it, it seems like the car is a lot more stable. Yeah. Like they put braces on the back on the bumper. Like when you, we looked at it and it like had pushed in two, three inches in those pockets. And it, th that's almost like what made the car real like, darty. Yeah. Like it was just cupping air on one half of it. Yeah. So it was just pushing the car, whatever, wherever it wanted. Well, arrow at 200 miles an hour is doing some weird things. You know, eighth mile, you can get away with having some crappy arrow. You can get away with it. Yeah. It's not helping you. But then when you see stuff like that, that's why, you know, Leroy's new body picked up so well. You were saying you're thinking it's probably more downforce, right? Yeah. Which, well, dude, that this I is mean, a, I would love to see him just put a wing on it, like a, a top fuel funny wing, like something yeah. that really puts some force on the ass yep. of the car. Because in his video, he was saying how the car gets a little sketchy up top with no body on it. I mean... I get it, the front needs a little weight on it, but at the end of the day, if you're hooking and booking and it ain't wheeling, fucking let that thing ride. I think it would go the same ET in mile an hour if it had the wing on it, as opposed to the body. Because hmm. I don't think the aerodynamics, I don't <laughs> think the aerodynamics mean a damn thing. Um, I, I bet you say that. I, uh, I get it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I get it. It's, I think also people don't realize the underbody of the car, how important that is, It's too. extremely important. Like, you look at Brett's new car, and it's, like, carbon. It is flat. You can't see anything Front to under there. It's yeah. flat. It's badass. Yeah. That's and a that's where a lot thing. of the dirty air is coming from is under the car. Because yeah. cars are fairly slick. Even a truck is fairly slick up yeah. top. Yes. But then under, you got, like... Frame rails, dips and got, holes, and drive shaft. You got yeah. all the the bars, the chassis bars. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that can drag under that. Yeah. So, aero gets funky, and it'd be interesting to see Gary do it. Would you do it like some of those weird no prep guys, where they mount it to the diff, <laughs> and they just Dude, drive the diff right now? That's a brilliant idea. Like that is, you don't really want the car because with that leveraging thing, you could get the car to leverage while having the rear end stuffing the tire onto the racetrack. Yeah. So you could have two times the leverage, not not literally two times, but it's... Yep. Well, because instead of just like squishing your shock, 
you're you're actually just pushing the tire. Yeah. You're you're skipping one step. That's like adding a 25 pound brick to it. Yeah. Just to the axle, you know, get a little more weight on the tire and see where it goes. Yeah, it was a really smart move to just put it right to the diff on those things. That's it's pretty cool. No prep guys, I feel like always have the out of the box ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's outlaw again. Like you you bring some crazy stuff. You see beater bump at the butthurt bar or whatever else. Everything's a gray area. If there's not a rule against it, it's a gray area. Yeah. Well, even like with wings, like you guys could do that. You got if you put a wing to the diff, I don't think anybody would really come after you. Nah. It might not help you. I think there's a couple guys that would complain. Be like, I don't know what he's doing, but I don't like it. <laughs> I don't understand, but I think he's cheating. <laughs> he's cheating somehow. None of this looks okay. I don't. Uh, John Sears, please, <laughs> like make a rule. <laughs> we need a ruling yeah. here, John. Yeah. But. All right, guys, that was fun. Um, where can they find you guys at? Social media is your business. Uh, you just kind of race, right? He, he's yeah. got his own thing going on, too. Let it eat performance. Yeah, let and it eat performance and tent. Yeah. Okay. Coleman Customs. Coleman Customs. What is Let it eat? Just building, building cars on the side a little bit. Oh, OK. Cool. Anything that's out of my realm, it goes to him. Where at? Up uh, southwest Ohio. Southwest Ohio, Let it eat performance? Yes, sir. OK, so like turbo kits and stuff like that? Yeah. Okay, cool. And then you'd full, full-time shop, yep. full-time deal. Yep. Badass. Build whatever stuff. you want. Go yeah. fast. Love going racing. Love going to the track with people and helping them go faster. Yeah. And you're up in Wisconsin? Yep. Okay. Wisconsin. Yeah. Waukesha, Wisconsin. Waukesha, Wisconsin. Yeah, you guys are way north of me. But, <laughs> guys, go check them out. If you want to watch some of these cars, 1320 video has probably done features on both of them i'd imagine or they've been in some of the videos by now but we will go to the next person mm-hmm.